In this video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to solve linear programming problems by graphing. So, first of all, if the problem is a word problem, make sure you set up the linear programming problem by listing the objective function, uh, the problem constraints, and the non-negative constraints. And then uh, the next step would be to graph the feasible region. And remember, if the feasible region is bounded, there exists a uh, maximum and a minimum. And if the feasible region is unbounded, only a minimum exists. Now, if there is no, no overlap, then there can be neither a maximum nor a minimum. Now, assuming a solution exists, you need to identify all the corner points of the feasible region. And uh, some corner points are found on the axes. Other corner points are found where the constraints intersect. And the origin 0, 0 may or may not be a corner point. And then once you have all the corner points, plug the corner points into the objective function and then determine uh, whether your objective function is to be maximized or minimized and figure out what that maximum or minimum is. So let's start with uh, an example here. We have a maximization problem here where we're maximizing uh, p equals 50x plus 80y subject to the constraints x plus 2y is less than or equal to 32, 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to 84, and xy is greater than or equal to 0. Now, on this example, we're actually going to graph the boundary x plus 2y equals 32 by letting x be 0 and solving for y, and we get 16. Then let y be 0 and solve for x, and we get 32. So this goes through... Uh, the point 0, 16, and then over here is a point uh, which I don't have labeled right over here because it's really not in the solution, but this is the point uh, right here. That point is the point uh, 32, 0. So let me just put it there just so you know what it is. So to graph the boundary, we would actually connect the dots between 0, 16, and 32, 0, something like that. And then we would determine which side of this line to shade by using the test point. So we're going to test uh, the point 0, 0 here. And so if we test the point 0, 0, if you plug 0, 0 into the inequality, you get 0 is less than or equal to 32, which is a true statement. So that means that you would actually shade um, in this direction for that line. So I'll just put a couple of arrows here. So you would shade in that direction for that line. So we would shade everything below that line. And then we would graph the other boundary, which is 3x plus 4y equals 84. And if you let x be 0, you get 0, 21, which is this point right here. And if you let y be 0, you get 28, 0, which is uh, this point right here. And then if you plot that line or, or connect those dots, you'll get something like, like this. And then um, if you graph those, um, I mean, if you test the origin there, you'll see that you get a true statement again. So you would shade everything below those below that line. So you would shade everything below that line. And so let's see here. Let me do one more. Okay. Now, where the two shaded regions would intersect, you'll see is in this dark green region. And in this dark green region, uh, normally that would go on forever and ever down, but we do have x and y is greater than or equal to 0, so we're restricted. We actually have to restrict this to the first quadrant. So let me see if I can um, draw this for you. And let me see if I can highlight that, maybe change the color for you. Let's change it to blue and then I'll make it a little thicker. 
Okay, so now you can see that my region is, is bounded by this blue shaded region and the corner point here is 0, 0. The corner point up here is 0, 16. The corner point over here is 28, 0. And then to get this corner point right here, 26, you actually have to solve this system, x plus 2y equal 32, 3x plus 4y equal 84. And that will give you where those two lines intersect. And so now we have uh, those four corner points. And so we plug each one of the corner points into the objective function. So if we plug 0, 0 in, we'll just get 0. If you plug 0, 16 in, you'll get uh, 12, 80. If you plug 26 in, you'll get 14, 80. And if you plug 28, 0 in, you'll get 1,400. So the optimal solution is right here at 1,480. So we get a maximum of 1480 when x is 20 and y is 6. Now the solution is not always inside the quadrant. It could be out here on the axis like at 0, 16 or 28, 0. For example, let's suppose that instead of 20x plus, uh, I'm sorry, instead of 50x plus 80y, suppose I had 20x plus 80y. Well, then if I had plugged in these values, the largest value I would have gotten would actually have been at 0, 16, which would have given me a maximum value for P of 1280 at the point 0, 16. So just make sure you understand that the optimal solution could be any of those points that are corner points. So it just depends on what you get when you plug them into the objective function. In this second example here, I'm actually minimizing a function 5x1 plus 2x2 subject to x1 plus 3x2 is greater than or equal to 15, 2x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 20, and x1 and x2 is greater than or equal to 0. So for this one, um, if you graph x1 plus 3x2 equal 15 by finding the intercepts, you'll find that when x1 is 0, x2 is 5. And when x2 is 0, x1 is 15. So if we identify the point 0, 5, which would be about right here on the grid, and then the point 15, 0, which is right here on the grid, I'm, obviously I'm scaling this a little bit, then that would give me this line. Excuse me, just a minute here. Let's see if I can get this to, to draw for me. So that would give me this line. Let's see if I can line it up just a little bit better. Okay, that should be close enough. All right, so, so I get a line that goes through here. And then when I, sh when I test 0, 0, if you plug 0, 0 back into the objective, uh, not the objective function, but into this inequality here, you'll actually get a false statement. So that means we have to shade everything that's above this line. So what I'll do is I'll just... Uh, draw a couple of arrows showing you the direction that we're going to shade here. So we have to shade that side of that line. And then to graph the other one, to graph the other one, uh, I have to graph the boundary 2x1 plus x2 equals 20. So when x1 is 0, x2 is 20. And when x2 is 0, uh, x1 is 10. And so when I put those points in, I get uh, 0, 20 right here, and then this point here is the point 10, 0, and then so I need to connect those dots, so I'll connect those, all right, and then if I test 0, 0 for this one, I will also get a false statement, so that means that I must shade uh, this side of that line. So let me see if I can draw that for you. So now um, if I take it where the two shaded regions overlap, they actually overlap um, out here in this area in the first quadrant. And their actual um, boundaries, I would be bounded here by the uh, y-axis. 
and then I'd be bounded from here to here by the uh, by that line and then I would be bounded here by that line and then I would be bounded here by the x-axis and then let me uh, try to give you a better look at the boundaries there okay so now you can see that my solution is this dark green region that's within uh, this boundary and notice I have a corner point right here at uh, 0 020 and I have a corner point down here at 15 0 and then I also have another corner point at the line 9 2 and that's where the two lines intersect and so to get that third corner point you have to solve this system x1 plus 3x2 equals 15 and 2x1 plus x2 equals 20 and then when you solve that system you'll get the value uh, for x1 you'll get 9 for x2 you'll get 2 so these are our three corner points 0 20 9 2 and 15 0 and so now my objective function remember was 5x1 plus 2x2 so if I plug the uh, corners in 0 20 would give me 40 uh, 9 2 would give me 49 and if I plug 15 0 into the function I get 75 so you can see here that the uh, corner point 0 20 gives me um, a minimum of c equal 40 when x1 is 0 and x2 equal 20. Now I know I kind of set a statement down here that the optimal solution is not always inside the first quadrant. That one actually was not inside the first quadrant, but I just want to show you that it, you could get another solution. Let's say the uh, objective function, instead of being 5x1 plus 2x2, let's say it was 5x1 plus 20x2. Well then if you plug in those uh, three pairs of numbers, uh, the corner points wouldn't change, so you just plug in those three corner points again. But this time, you would get that the optimal solution would actually be at... Uh, that should say these should say C equals 75 not P so the solution should say C for all these all right so anyway but your solution would be at C equals 75 but this time the solution would be at 15 0 so again um, all I did if you go back and look at the guidelines all I did was graph the feasible region and then find the corner points and then I plugged the corner points into the objective function and determined the uh, minimum value from that. Now remember, this is an unbounded region, so there's no maximum. You might be tempted to say, like for here, you might be tempted to say, well, the maximum is 400, but that would be false because there is no maximum for an unbounded region. Remember, this region goes on forever and ever and ever in this direction, so therefore it's an unbounded region. Okay, now these two problems that I solved here, they're actually a specific type of problem that we'll learn to solve later in the chapter. Uh, this problem where you're maximizing and both of your problem constraints are less than or equal to, that's actually called a standard maximization problem. And this problem where you're minimizing and both constraints are greater than or equal to, that's actually a standard minimization problem. And so later we'll actually talk about how we solve standard maximization and standard minimization problems. Now down here are a couple more problems that you can uh, freeze the video and practice on here. And I've actually given you the corner points and the uh, optimal solution for both of these uh, if you want to uh, work these for practice. I'll work some more problems on the next video of of these types of problems.